In this video, I wanna talk about a pretty simple tip that if you fully understand it, I think it can help you to go out there and, and find a lot more fish. It can help you to find fish quicker on no matter what type of body of water that you are fishing, whether it's a pond or it's a lake or it's a river, no matter where you are fishing, I think it will help you. Now, real quick, before we get into the video, this video is brought to you by my apparel company, Fin Fishing. If you guys would like to help support this channel, the best way to do so is shopping at Fin Fishing. I have USA made sun shirts. They're one of the only ones out there on the market. I have other items. This is one of my favorite hats right now. It's a new color of hat with a wooden bass patch on the top. I have a lot of products, and again, it's one of the best ways to help support this channel, so click those links for fin fishing down below. All right, let's talk about this simple tip, this simple trick, and like I said, it's very, very simple. It takes a little bit more of your mind just thinking of the scenarios where this would work best in, and this actually derives from me listening to I remember listening to a, a podcast or a video where Seth Fighter was talking about finding fish in milfoil. And he, milfoil is a, a submergent grass that grows really, really tall. And he talked about the way that he goes about finding fish. Now, this same concept that he talks about, you can apply to no matter what type of fishing that you are doing. It can still help you to simply find fish. And here's the thing, in, in, in tournament situations, Seth Fighter likes to flip and pitch a jig into milfoil. That's how he feels like he's gonna get a bigger than average bite. As we have seen a lot, jigs tend to get more bites than say soft plastics. But when he's trying to locate fish, what he likes to do is flip and pitch a soft plastic. He actually uses a crawl tube bait. And he likes to use that crawl tube because he simply knows that that bait will get more bites than a jig. And we don't always know the actual statistic behind that. We don't know if that soft plastic is gonna get 10 more bites than a jig, or maybe for every jig bite you could get five. We don't know that, but it's just something that you do see when you're out there fishing. Is that a, a little bit more finessey soft plastic is going to get more bites than a, a little bit bigger profile bait. So he uses a soft plastic to find the fish but then he switches over to the jig to try to catch the big fish. Now, that same concept of using kind of a soft plastic bait to start, you can apply to all your fishing. And especially if you live on bodies of water that are highly pressured, ones that where the bass see everything, or you're fishing during like certain weather conditions or certain times of the year, like late summer. Late summer, you know, in the July, August, September, it is tough to catch a bass no matter where you live. And in those type of situations, highly pressured situations, sometimes it's actually better to try to locate fish by using baits that I wouldn't consider to be search baits. Baits like soft plastics of some sort, whether that is a, a, a soft plastic flipping bait or a jig, or sorry, not a jig, or a, a shaky head or a drop shot. For me, it's a drop shot. And this is something that, you know, I continue to learn each and every year, kind of this whole principle, because I remember years ago, I was, I was practicing for um, a, an event that I was going to fish and I fished down this stretch of bank. It was cloudy day. It was in the, towards the end of that summer on a highly pressured body of water. It was a cloudy day and there was a lot of wood laydowns and my mind was screaming buzz bait. It was like buzz bait, buzz bait, buzz bait, cover as much water as you can, try to locate maybe a stretch or two that has fish. Now, I fished through this one kind of stretch, and right when I was getting ready to leave, I happened to see a guy pull up behind me, and I watched him catch two fish flipping and pitching a soft plastic worm in a matter of minutes down a stretch that I had just fished. I just had passed over a bunch of fish. Now, I never went back to that area during the tournament to fish because in my mind, I knew like if I had left that area and didn't see this guy catch fish, I, I would have never thought that there was bass there. So I'm not, and I'm also not just gonna, I'm not, I'm not a bent pole pattern type of guy, bent pole pattern type of guy. So anyways, but the, it really helped me to learn kind of this concept of sometimes there are days where it is important to put down those search lures and just simply use lures that are gonna get a lot of bites. For me, it's become a drop shot. I always have a drop shot tied up. 
always, no matter what type of water that I fish, whether that's super gin clear water or even dirtier water, I like to have a drop shot because I just, I've seen it so many times where a drop shot will get bit, it gets a lot of bites. So if I fish an area, Nowadays, if I fish an area, I'm not saying that I always start with the drop shot, but I always try to at least make a few casts with that drop shot or with some sort of soft plastic bait to make sure that I didn't pass over fish because that is something that is real. That is something that can easily happen. So for example, I might, you know, I might see a, a big grass flat. Maybe it's a flat that drops into a little bit of a creek channel, an area to me that screams chatterbait, right? And sometimes what I have learned to do is I will fish through that area with the chatterbait, but usually when you're fishing, you'll kind of pick up on maybe two or three areas where you're like, man, there should have been one there. Maybe it was a, a perfect little isolated clump of grass, or maybe it was a little spot where that grass made a point, or maybe there was a perfect little divot in the grass, like high percentage zones in that grass. So instead of just fishing through that area quick with the chatterbait and then leaving, I usually like to try to circle around really quick and at least make a couple of pitches to those areas with a drop shot. It's something that I think is very, very powerful because there have been numerous times where I circle around, I pitch that drop shot and I get bit and I realize I am fishing too fast. I am fishing for bass that are probably highly pressured, that have seen everything, and I, if I continue to fish the way that I am, I'm gonna miss fish. And those are the tournaments for me, or even just days out on the water where I get into trouble, is where I fish too quick. So it's just something that I think if you really fully grasp the concept, and it, it'll help you to locate fish, especially when nobody else will because there are so many other guys like myself where we see certain scenarios. We see that wood lay down and it's a cloudy day like I just talked about where we think buzz bait. We see a, a rip wrap bank and we all think uh, square bill, right? That's what most of us at least think. Or we see that grass flat and we're thinking top waters. We're thinking all of these moving baits and there are days where it is just smarter and you're going to catch more by simply slowing down and throwing that soft plastic bait. So I hope that you guys fully understand this. I know for some of you, it's probably elementary, but I think it's just something that we don't always think about when we're out there on the water. And it's something that can truly help you. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I think you will like my most recent video. I'm gonna leave it linked right here. And also don't forget, I'm putting out a video every single day. So if you guys want to subscribe, hit that subscribe button and I will see you tomorrow.